calibrate the pumps, they must be charged. If the pumps have not been charged within the past 48 hours, you must recharge the pumps prior to sampling. Start the pumps so they can be warming up. They need to run at least three minutes before you begin the calibration. Be sure to verify the pump flow rates in an area where you are not exposing the media and equipment to the contaminant, like an office setting. All pumps have the lab calibration information on the field pump data sheets provided. Set up the pumps with the correct media in line with the field rotometer as shown. The order of the components for calibration is pump, short length of tubing, constant pressure controller, long length of tubing, adjustable low flow holder, sorbent tube, short tubing, sorbent tube, and rotometer. Use a tube breaker to break both ends of the tube to provide an opening at least one half the internal diameter. Insert the open sorbent tube into the holder's rubber sleeve with the arrow on the tube pointed toward the holder. If the tube does not have an arrow, then place the end of the sorbent tube with the smallest sorbent section, backup section, into the tube holder toward the pump. Using a short length of tubing, connect the back sorbent tube to the front tube so that both tubes are oriented in the same direction, with arrows pointed toward the pump. Connect the rotometer to the exposed end of the back sorbent tube. This setup uses an adjustable low flow holder. This allows flow adjustments in the low flow range between 0.10 and 0.50 liters per minute. Do not adjust the pump itself at any time while verifying calibrations. Only the low flow holder should be adjusted. With everything sitting on a level flat surface, check the ball float in the rotometer. Adjust the flow rate by turning the flow adjustment screw on the adjustable low flow holder until the rotometer indicates the desired flow. Be sure to take your rotometer reading at eye level and use the center of the float for the value. Do not adjust the flow on the pump at this point. Only adjust the flow on the low flow holder. After you are satisfied with the flow rate, record the value on the field pump data sheet. Remove the sorbent tubes, cap their ends, and mark them as front and back for use in the post calibration you will be performing after testing is completed. Remove the rotometer and attached tubing. Using a tube breaker, break both ends of the tube to provide an opening at least one half the internal diameter. Insert the open sorbent tubes just as you did previously, with both arrows pointed toward the pump. These sorbent tubes will be used for sampling. Place the appropriate size tube cover over the sorbent tubes and screw it in place onto the low flow holder. Remember, a field blank should be collected for each sample set and should accompany the monitor during all periods except actual sampling. For more detailed information, watch the Galson Field Blanks instructional video. After sampling is completed, turn off the pump, remove the tube cover, remove the sorbent tubes, and immediately seal the tubes on both ends with the red caps provided. Label the sorbent tubes. A post calibration must be performed on the pump. Perform the post calibration the same way you did the pre calibration, using the marked calibration sorbent tubes, but do not make any set screw adjustments. Just record the flow rate on the pump calibration sheet. The pre and post rates should be within 10% of each other. If they are, average the flow rates to determine the flow rate to be used to calculate the air volume. All rotometers are calibrated against a primary standard quarterly. This calibration formula is located on the side of the field rotometer. Take the average rotometer reading and plug it into the calibration formula found on the side of the rotometer to determine your actual flow rate. Multiply the flow rate, LPM, by the total time sampled in minutes to get the air volume in liters. Record the total liters on the field pump data sheets and the chain of custody. If the post sampling rates are not within 10%, OSHA considers the samples screening samples, and if the analytical results show high levels, resampling is recommended. Then, complete the chain of custody form. It is important that you include all the information requested in order to ensure the turnaround time of your samples. Remove the pink copy and keep this for your records. Send the white and yellow copies in with the samples to the lab in the large Ziploc bag. Please place any unused media inside the Ziploc bag 
marked with the orange unused media label. This will indicate that these items should not be analyzed and will be properly disposed of by Galson Laboratories. Questions? Contact SGS Galson by phone or IH live chat 1-800-227-5278.